Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Now, before we get started, make sure you're smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription helps build the channel. Even better, spread the word to your friends about the best wine show anywhere. All right. So about seven months ago, I got approached about reviewing a new line of wines from the Ron Rubin Winery. They are part of their blue bin uh, series, a set of wines in plastic bottles. Now you might be going, what are we talking about plastic bottles? These are the same ones, you know, the same idea from last week. Um, so, you know, hold your horses, plastic bottles. You know, before I get into what these are and why, in case you didn't watch last week's episode, I'll also catch you up on the winery itself. Now I also did this last episode. Um, now I've reviewed their wines in the past, so I'll have links below to the backstory. The really, really short version is Ron was part of the beverage industry for a long time. He was with the family business. It was a wholesale liquor company in the early 70s. He eventually worked for Clearly Canadian, and then he bought the Republic of Tea. Then after that, he bought the River Road Family Vineyards and Winery in the Green Valley of the Russian River Valley. So that was the even shorter version. Uh, last episode, I went through all the details about the wines, more about the plastic bottles and all that. So this episode, we're just going to get into the wines. Let's get the stats, shall we? So the first one will be the 2022 Blue Bin Chardonnay, suggested retail price, $15 from California. It's Chardonnay, probably 100%. It's certified green, as in from the Certified California Sustainable Vineyard and Winery. It's SIP certified. It's also a certified B Corporation. I went through all of that last week, and ABV is 12.5%. Next wine, 2022 Blue Bin Von Rosé, uh, suggested retail price, $15. Also, California. It just says that, it just says Von Rosé on the website, uh, and nowhere else on the bottle does it describe what the grape varieties are. Uh, it is certified green, also certified California Sustainable Vineyard and Winery. It's SIP certified. It's certified B Corporation, and its ABV is, well, 12.5%. One additional observation, these are not appellated wines like last week, as in they just say California and not an AVA. Not a big deal as the vineyards they are coming from also have to meet all of the sustainable requirements. Also, it would be nice to know the grape varieties for the rosé. Maybe they plan on using different varieties every year. I don't know, but I would like to see that. Um, and as I mentioned last week with these plastic bottles, what's an advantage to them is um, besides that they're recyclable, they're reusable. I mean, glass bottles are reusable too, but because they are plastic, if you want to take them to places where plastic is verboten, forbidden, um, then you can, um, to like places like the pool, the beach, the river, uh, anywhere that plastic is not a great idea. And then you bring plastic glasses or you drink it out of the bottle, I don't, I don't, whatever you want to do. Um, I'm not going to judge. But um, so that's a huge advantage to this. Um, and you could say, you drink these wines, and then you could also put different wines. If you want to say, get a little fancier with your wines in, in the glass forbidden areas, then you can do that and just put another wine in here. And since they're screw cap, again, advantage of screw cap, you can bring something a little fancier to the pool party. So all kinds of great things about this. Reusable, they're lightweight, use you know, lower carbon footprint. Uh, they have that glass-like lining inside, so it helps prevent oxidation, at least over at least at least for 12 months, uh, from one of the studies I had. So cool things with that. You might hear noises in the background because someone is being very loud in their office. Or not, because the the um, noise reduction that I use might be getting rid of it. But if you hear distractions in the background, that's what's going on. All right. Plus, it is during the day, hence why there's distractions in the background. Um, so a plane might come overhead, or 
it was kind of windy earlier, but those usually get knocked out from the, um, from the uh, noise reduction. All right, let's get into the Chardonnay. Uh, it's got a good yellowish color. Um, so uh, this is, I expect this from, from this wine, from this grape variety. Um, and like I mentioned last week, oh, also about last week, I, I said that last week's episode was on April 8th, Eclipse Day. No, I forgot. I I'm recording these in a different order than what's going to come out. Um, Eclipse was the week before. I'm recording the wine that's going to go out on Eclipse Day next because it's a red wine. Though I am using a separate glass. It's more about palate. Anyway, um, but I also mentioned about, you know, concern about oxidation and all that. But those wines, the color, once I got them into the glass and looked at them, were fine. But yeah, so let's uh, just smell it. So we got the usual thing. Again, you still may hear more background noise because behind my green screen, which is not a wall, a soundproof wall, you might hear stuff. So uh, got a little peach, a little orange, a little nectarine. That's a little bit of mango. There's a touch of there's a touch of tropical fruit. So a little bit of yellow apple. A touch bruised, maybe. But I don't I don't think the wine's oxidized or going into any type of oxidative state. It might be just. It's not like super fresh, but it's pleasant for sure. No, it's it's I'd, I'd call it fresh. No evidence of any oak, which I don't expect any oak on this. These are, in my opinion, meant to be like really just easily enjoyable wines. Um, and I would, I would, in my opinion, anything that oaked like that might not be in, in line with what the, the wines are intended for. Nor do I smell really anything that thinks that I think they might have gone through any malolactic fermentation. But when we get on the palate, we'll, uh, we'll decide that. And Chardonnay. It's very pleasant Chardonnay. Um, it's more in the style of Chardonnay that I like. I don't have overly oaked or oaked at all. And it's very apple-y now. Now I get more green apple. And with that orange, a little more fresher on the orange and a little bit of tropical fruit. But um, and it may have gone through some partial malolactic to kind of maybe tame some things. But my mouth is really watering. So my guess it has more malic acid than lactic acid, which is a more intense acid uh, on your palate. So I expect the pH is probably a little low. Again, like last week, I would like to see the pH and TA numbers, um, but it's very pleasant. Um, it's not steely, flinty like Chablis, but it's not this oak bomb, butter bomb like type of thing. It's not, it, it doesn't feel flabby or, or creamy on the palate. It's definitely more what I like out of Chardonnay. And these wines have definitely warmed up. They're not room temperature, but they're in a more closer, actually probably a little bit above serving temperature right now, but they're right in that range, which means I, you can get some great expression out of them. So I like the wine, 15 bucks. It's a good quality wine. All right, now onto the rosé. So we have um, a little bit of a copper color, uh, a salmon color, if you will. And there's a little bit of, yeah, tinge, orange tinge to that. Um, it's not pink per se, but yeah, let's, let's uh, check it out. Aromatically, not a ton going on. I mean, I get a little bit of that strawberry and that's about it. I mean, I usually expect strawberry watermelon a lot of times out of most rosés, regardless of the um, grape variety that's used. It just kind of, that's what the, 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 great, the winemaking style of rosé lends itself to. Especially if it's a traditional, very limited skin contact, and then you get it off the skins and you do that. If you're doing, um, if you're doing sanye, which is still kind of like that, but you're bleeding off everything, um, you're bleeding off like a little bit uh, from the skin contact to get your rosé, and then you're using the rest as a red wine. That's fine. Um, if you're like mixing, if you're putting a red and white wine together, um, not necessarily going to get it that way. And there's not a lot of quality rosés that are made that way. And a lot of places in the world, it's not allowed. I mean, like Europe, where they regulate a lot of things. But yeah, I mean, I get that pleasant <sighs> strawberry, a little bit of raspberry, very light. Let's, uh, let's uh, taste it. Get on the palate. Mmm. I got, I got something going on here. There's a little savoriness to this. Yeah. My guess is it's probably a Grenache-based rosé. Um, 
you might have some Carignan, you might have some Cinso, you might have some Syrah. I mean, it feels like it's more of a southeastern France style rosé, not quite Provençal. It, it's it's a little bit more savory. So we might be getting into things like Bandal Tavel type of type of territory. I'd even say there's a little touch of like smokiness, barbecue feeling here. Um, definitely more earth going on. Um, and the fruit is a little bit tart. It's more of a cranberry, like not like legit, like you eat a cranberry because they're bitter, right? But there is a, there is a bitterness a little bit to it, but like a cranberry like thing going on along with a little strawberry, really no watermelon, but I kind of feel like this would be a great like picnic wine, a great barbecue wine. I think it would actually go really well with the meats, all the meats in the barbecue, like a brisket or ribs, you know, um, that kind of thing. And also go great with your potato salad. Uh, it's kind of funny because I, the other three wines did not inspire me food wise. Um, they were more like, yeah, man, like porch pounder, like you're at the beach, you're at the river, you're at the pool. Perfect for that. It's just, it's just there to keep the party going. This, I feel a little more serious. Um, I mean, I could bring hot dogs to bring hot dogs to the beach. I remember as a kid going to the beach, putting hot dogs in the thermos, you know, um, having this with that, it'd be fantastic. This is my favorite of the group. Yeah. And you, you definitely get a little bit of the red fruits, that raspberry going through the cranberry a little bit. It's a little bit more tame now. It's not as, it's not as herbaceous and earthy as it was, but it's fantastic. I, I, this is the best of the group. Um, and I mean, I would say in order, the Pinot Grigio Sauvignon Blanc are about equal to me. The Chardonnay is a better wine and or to, more to my liking. Let's maybe not ranking it in quality level. I think they're all really good quality, but the Rosé is my favorite of the group. Um, I think it's just has more character, more things going on, more interesting. Um, I feel there's more possibilities to it. And uh, and I'm going to enjoy that. I'm going to well, enjoy all the wines. I'm going to really enjoy that wine. All right. Well, that's going to do it for today's show. If you like what I'm doing, make sure you're smashing that like button and subscribing to the show and tell your friends and we'll see everyone next time. Boom. Cheers.